Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, you will learn how to remove items from the state and how to use the filter method to get the new updated state without the removed item. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to watch all the other React tutorials. The first thing we'll do in this video is to prevent the submission of empty values. So if there is anything, we should not see new value or new item being added to the list and also preventing adding multiple items because the key is the same as the name of the item. Okay, so we want to prevent both of these issues. Now, if we go back to VS Code, the first thing we'll add to the state is a new property and that will be message. Okay, so we want to make sure there is a message on our state which will be empty by default and we will use this message to print out our validation messages. To prevent the empty form submission, we can check whether the new item is empty and if it's not empty, that we want to set the state. Okay, so this is a simple validation. If new item is not empty, then we want to set it and add it to our state. If it is empty, then this won't run. Okay, so this is the prevention of empty submission. Now, if we try to submit the form with empty value, nothing is happening. So this is now working fine. The other validation we want to add to this is a check if it's on the list and if not, then we want to add the item to the list. Okay, so we want to move this up inside of else statement and if will be is on the list. So if it's on the list, then we want to show a different validation message. So inside of here, we will run a this dot set state and we'll set the message to be this item is already on the list. Now we need to check and define this is on the list variable. So just above the if statement, we'll create a new constant is on the list and that will equal to by items. And we want to make sure that if it includes the new item, it will return true and if it doesn't include it will return false okay so we've got this is on the list looking for the buy items and looking for the new item inside of the buy items and if it's there returns true if it's not there it returns false which means it will add it to our state okay so let's save this and see it in the browser in action if i type in text which is not on the list, we should be able to see it, add it to the list. And if I type in text again, we should not see it added to the list. Okay, so the validation works. Now we need to print out a validation message saying this item is already on the list, just to make sure it works fine. You see that we have now message, this item is already on the list because we try to add text to our list. The message works, it's empty by default, but if we try to add something which is already on the list, we are changing it to this item is already on the list. Now let's print this message in the HTML. So just above the table inside of the content, here we will try to render the message. We'll wrap it in the curly braces and here we want to check if the message is not empty and if it's not empty we want to render paragraph that will render our message and we'll give it a simple class name message and text danger okay so this is the default bootstrap red text color and message is just our simple styling. So here we're checking if the message is not empty, we are rendering it. If it is empty, this won't render anything. Okay, so I save it, go back to the 
project in a browser, we've got a console error, message is not defined. Okay, message is not defined because I haven't included it into this destructuring. So let's include message here. Now we have the message set as a constant and this shouldn't throw any errors. Okay, saving the file, going back to the browser and voila, there is no error. And if we try to include empty, doesn't do anything. If we try to include something which is already on the list, like a milk, we see this item is already on the list. Now we also need to include a reset. So we want to make sure that the message is empty again. If we try to include something valid, we adding bread, oh sorry, this is already on the list. If we adding fruit is already on the list, oh, I'm short of, uh, short of, I'm short of words. Let's add a book. Okay, as you can see, book is included and the message is still invalid. So we need to reset the message to be empty. And that's very simple. All we have to do is scroll up and inside of the is on the list else statement, here we need to define the message to be empty. And that will reset it if we adding new items to our list. Okay, so here we are setting the invalid. Here we setting the message to be empty as by default. And the next thing we'll do, we'll create the remove method that will remove items from our list. Okay, so let's do it just under the add item. We'll call this remove item. And this method will take item. Okay, so we need to know which item to remove from the list. And for now, we'll simply console log remove plus item. Okay, so this will tell us which item we want to remove. We'll change it to setting the right state a little bit later. For now, we just want to console log it when we click a button inside of the items. We will scroll down where the button is, where the action button is for each of the items and replace this with a button element. So let's type in button and inside of it we'll have the remove text. We'll make it type button and class name will be again the bootstrap BTN, BTN default and BTN SM for small. So this should render default button small size. And we also want to make sure that this table data is aligned right. For that, I've created my own class text right. Actually, no, this is the bootstrap text right class as well. So this will make sure that buttons always stick to the right side of our table. And the last thing on the button we need to do is to define on click handler. And here again, we'll use the arrow function and call this dot remove item and pass in the item. Okay, so here, if we click on the button, we should be able to see console log with the item we are trying to remove. So let's see if this works. I'm saving the file, going back to browser. And if I try to remove the milk, we are removing the milk, removing the bread and removing the fruit. So we are really passing the right item. Obviously the string is incorrect, but that's not the priority here. We just wanted to make sure we're passing the right item because inside of the remove method, we will delete this and we will set the state to the right value. So what we want to do inside of the remove item method is call this set state and set the buy items to new buy items. We will need to take a copy of the old buy items and create a constant called new buy items, but we'll need to filter out the item we want to remove. Okay, so here we create a constant 
new buy items. We will take the old state and all the buy items inside of it and we will filter, we'll use the filter method. We'll get the individual buy items and we use the arrow function to return only if the buy item doesn't equal item. Now let's break down the filter method a little bit more detail, just making sure you all understand how it works because it's very handy. We are getting the old state, we are getting all the buy items from it and we're filtering it, which means that we'll take individual items from that original state and we're comparing the items themselves with the item we want to remove. And we are keeping all the items that don't match our item inside of the state and we want to kick out the item we want to remove. If you are more a visual learner, then this screenshot might help you understand it a little bit more. Again, we are looping through the old state, looping through all the buy items. We're taking the individual items, which in our loop is called buy item, and we're comparing them. And if it doesn't equal, then we're keeping it in. And if it equals, then we are kicking it out of the new state, which means that the final new buy items will be without the items we want to remove. Okay, so now what we can do, we can simply set the state to our new buy items and spread them inside of the buy items. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's prove in a browser that this works. And if we click on remove, we really see the items being removed from the list. And that's it all for today. Now you know how to remove items from the list and how to use the set method and filter method to get the new updated state. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. State, state, state. We said a lot of, lot of states in this video. Hopefully that state, that React state makes sense, but if not, you know what to do, scroll down to the comment sections and leave your comment there. Until next time, happy coding, bye.